We're going to talk about something a little deeper today, how ponds balance themselves chemically and biologically, and what you can do to keep the balance working in your favour. If you've ever wondered why your pond builds up muck no matter what you do, or why crystal clear swimming pools don't seem to, this one's for you. But if you don't already know me, my name is Kev, and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain a pond without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, you might like to subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. Recently I had someone ask if calcium carbonate can help reduce sludge buildup. The short answer is sort of, but not directly. Calcium carbonate doesn't eat sludge. What it does is it raises your KH. That's the number of carbonate or bicarbonate ions that are dissolved in the water. That in turn helps pH stability, and this gives your beneficial bacteria the perfect environment to thrive, and the bacteria can help digest the sludge. As the bacteria work their magic, they use carbonate in the water. Over time, this can lower the carbonate content and cause the KH to drop. The cool thing about calcium carbonate is that if your pond water's already well buffered, it won't dissolve. It'll sit there harmlessly on the bottom until the water becomes acidic again. So if you want to test it, you can throw a small mesh bag of crushed coral, shell grit or pure calcium carbonate into a low flow area. If it starts to dissolve, your pond needed the buffer. If it doesn't, you're already balanced. Job done. It's a self-regulating system. Before we go further, make sure you're using calcium carbonate or ag lime, not hydrated or builder's lime. The later dissolve instantly and that'll spike your pH and that can wipe out your pond. Certain rocks like limestone will also naturally dissolve a little bit in slightly acidic or soft water. Again, that's naturally regulating the carbonates in the water. KH and pH aren't something that I monitor in my ponds. I'm lazy and I don't really monitor anything. But if you're struggling with low pH and lots of algae, it is worth checking the KH. So you're probably also thinking, I've seen products that claim to eat pond sludge. Basically, they're beneficial bacteria and enzymes that digest organic waste, fish poo, leaves and biofilm. So these are going to work best when your pond's pH and KH are stable. The temperature also needs to be warm enough and there needs to be plenty of oxygen. If the water's cold or has low alkalinity, their metabolism slows right down. In a healthy stable pond, you might only need to boost the bacteria population every now and then, like after a cold snap or a major clean out. But if your pH crashes or you clean everything too thoroughly, they'll die off, which is why companies recommend redosing every week or every few weeks. It's also important to remember that every pond is different. The amount of fish, duck or turtle waste, plant material or amount of food going into the pond will all contribute to how fast or slow the sludge builds up. Even with all the right conditions, there may simply be too much incoming waste that the bacteria and other consumers simply can't keep pace. This is why it's very common for dedicated koi ponds to have bottom drains that will send the waste off to the filters where it can be manually removed. For those of us with natural looking ponds and no bottom drain, the more waste and leaf material we can remove, the more we help the bacteria and other consumers do their job. Now for me, I'm lazy and I leave my ponds neglected for very long periods of time. They might not look clean, but all this mess is teeming with life, bacteria, tiny organisms, fungi, algae, it all feeds the food chain. This system works for me, but it might be too messy for you, and that's okay. I do notice that as the weather warms up and the bacteria and other pond fauna become more active, the pond naturally becomes cleaner looking with less buildup. I should also mention that I'm less lazy when the weather is warmer. I might pick up a net from time to time and remove some stuff. And I tend to get in my larger pond in the warmer weather and stir everything up. And this helps a lot of those lighter sediments get pulled over into the filters. 
So here's where it gets interesting. In swimming pools, chlorine and ozone create a high redox potential. That's a fancy way of saying the water is chemically oxidising everything in sight. Organics get burned up into CO2 and water before they have a chance to settle. That's why pools stay sterile and never build up sludge. Well, not organic sludge, anything inorganic will still settle inside the pool or the filters. But ponds are living systems. We want lower redox levels so plants, microbes and fish can coexist. Instead of chlorine, we rely on biological oxidation. Oxygen from aeration, plants and microbes doing the hard work. That's why every pond, no matter how perfect, will slowly accumulate some sediment. The trick is keeping biological oxidation ahead of organic accumulation. And that's just a fancy way of saying we want more stuff breaking down waste and less stuff contributing waste. If you watch the channel or you read the blog posts on ozponds.com, You've probably also seen me use sodium percarbonate in a pond. This is also an active ingredient in certain pond treatments. Anyway, if you add it to the pond, it'll lift up the muck on the bottom. As it reacts with the muck, it releases oxygen, and there's also some carbonate and sodium, which is salt. The sodium percarbonate is an oxidizer like chlorine, ozone, or hydrogen peroxide. While this isn't natural, it does highlight the power of oxidizers. If you want to see me add it to my pond, this is the video you want to look up, or you can find the article I wrote on ozponds.com. Your pond isn't one uniform environment. It's a patchwork of zones, each with its own chemistry. The surface water and open pond are high redox. That means they're oxygen rich and full of aerobic bacteria. The bog filter and gravel layers are moderate. Oxygen leaks in from plant roots, supporting bacteria that finish breaking down organics. The deep substrate and sludge pockets are low redox, maybe even anaerobic, where the last traces of organic matter slowly mineralize. A healthy pond keeps most of its area in the aerobic range, say 250 to 400 millivolts if you were measuring it and only a small portion goes anaerobic. I have tested a device that can monitor your redox, pH, etc. And if that's something that you're interested in, I'll put a link down in the description. So you don't need chemicals to raise your redox. You can do it biologically. First, we can aerate, find bubble diffusers or small waterfalls, push oxygen through the water column. Second, we want to circulate the water with purpose. Moving water throughout the pond helps prevent dead zones. Three, we want to think about that buffering potential. We can maintain the KH around 80 to 150 milligrams per litre with calcium carbonate, and that keeps the bacterial enzymes stable. Number four, we want to use some plants. Plants leak oxygen through their roots, oxidising the gravel bed. Number five, we want to encourage a diversity of life. Things like snails, worms and small crustaceans can mix the top sediment, keeping it well oxygenated. You can even take it a step further, adding a small amount of soluble silica. That encourages diatomes, which are a beneficial algae that form a light brown film on rocks and compete with nucin algae for nutrients. They form the base of the food chain, and this helps feed a host of beneficial organisms that contribute to the health of the pond. So a small dose of silicate can shift your algae balance in a good way. Think of it as seeding the right team first. Like the calcium carbonate, the silica will only dissolve as it's needed. There's two products that do this really well, New Algae and Diatomics, and I have links to both on ozponds.com if you want to give them a try. When you understand how these zones and processes work together, buffering, oxygenation, bacteria, plants, you realise there's no single miracle cure. A clear low maintenance pond is just chemistry and biology in harmony. If you want to take the guesswork out of designing a pond that naturally balances itself, check out my pond formulas blueprint 
It walks you through the full design process, from calculating pump flow and bog size, to understanding the biology that keeps your water crystal clear. You can grab that over at ozponds.com or click the link in the description. If you enjoyed this deep dive, give it a like, maybe share it with someone building a pond or struggling with theirs, and let me know in the comments, have you experimented with calcium carbonate, bacteria or silica in your pond? I'd love to hear what worked for you. See you next time. Thanks for watching.